So, we can go ahead and move on these guys that's moved on into round two. Uh, today we're going to be doing like a, a round two predictions, round one and week recap kind of type of video. Um, I kind of did this in the Jimmy Butler video already, but yeah. Uh, who I got winning the chip. Already did my little bracket prediction. I still think like the stuff that's going to end up winning it all. Um, especially with all the news that came out with Embiid. Embiid went from like a grade one that should only be out like a week. It's been a week. They've had the longest uh, layoff. And then since like Saturday, I think, you guess you could say. Since like Saturday, they've now come out and said that. Um, and Saturday they said he may miss game one. Yesterday they said they, they came out and said he may miss game one and game two. And then this morning today, apparently like Skip Bayless said that he may have a small tear. And he and they're talking about, I even seen Lowe say that somebody going to come out and say that he's going to miss the whole series. And if he does play, he's at 20 to 30%. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of, kind of crazy. But round by round, let's just go over every single matchup. I already went over the Bucks heat. If y'all want to see that, I did go over that in a video. Jimmy Butler, if, if I don't, like, Jimmy Butler just pretty much put on a crazy all-time performance for a single round. Um... I don't know who James Buckets is. I think he's talking about Jimmy Buckets. But to be honest, um, at this point, after yesterday, I think I know who I think is the best or who deserves the mantle for right now because they've done too much in the past couple years. But um, based off what Jimmy Butler did, I wonder what it really does take to get the actual mantle of being the best player in the world because there's not too many people doing what Jimmy did in those two game spans. Now, um, Cavaliers, Knicks, this is probably the biggest upset to me, um, but if it really shouldn't be that big of a deal because the Cavs are just, the way they are built is very weird. If I'm the Cavs, I'm honestly trading two of those players. I'm trading one big and I'm trading one guard. Um, the big is kind of obvious. I think Jared Allen doesn't really fit next to Evan Mobley, and if they're going to try to have those two together, I don't think it really just fits with those two guards. So I would trade a big and a guard. Now, me personally, um, I don't think they're, I don't, I think it's kind of obvious who they want to do, but if they didn't trade everything that they had to get Donovan Mitchell, I might trade Donovan Mitchell because I feel like you get the most, but I think, I think you got to keep Donovan Mitchell at this point because they traded all that stuff they got and they got to keep Evan Mobley. I don't really like the idea of trading Garland, so it's kind of tough. So I think they definitely got to trade Jerry Allen, but I probably would even trade a guard and a big because they need some defense in that guard slot. And they need a little bit more, like, they need some wings, too. But, yeah, um, 76ers, Nets, they pretty much tried to double-team trap uh, Embiid the whole series. And then you thought they did a good job until Embiid didn't play and they still lost. And 76ers, first game, it was, like, hitting shots. And then the rest of the game, it was a little bit more of a struggle. But for the most part, 76ers dominated that series. Nets was the worst team in the playoffs. Everybody knew that going into the playoffs. Um, they wouldn't have made the playoffs if they was that team the whole year. But I do think the Nets have a good future ahead of them with Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson. And I think they still have, like, some good trade bait that a lot of people will want. Um, Atlanta Hawks versus the, the Celtics. That actually could have been – that's probably the most surprising series. But looking at it, you can tell, like, the last two games – like, the two games they lost, the Celtics was kind of, like – they weren't fully locked in the way they was, especially game one. Game one, they were locked in. Uh, got to get credit to uh, Trey Young. Got to get credit to Jonathan Murray. Got to get credit to the, uh, a lot of the players that stepped up on the uh, Hawks to take them to two games. Like I said in the other video, I would not be surprised if, like, the Celtics don't really go beyond six games in another series for the rest of the playoffs because you got to think about it. The 76ers now are not going to have Embiid. They're not going to play the Bucks now. Um... The closest thing that they could have is in the uh, finals. That'll be interesting to see who they match up with. But, yeah, that'll be very interesting. And then we got going back into the West, um, the Nuggets and the Timberwolves. Honestly, um, I said it before in my playoff prediction that it's crazy that people were saying that the Timberwolves was going to win in seven. I think that really was just Jokic hate. But I think after that game one between the Nuggets and the Suns, I think people are now starting to respect the Nuggets for what they are. People was trying to put all this pressure on Jokic, but they didn't even believe in the Nuggets to actually beat the Timberwolves. Like, that's crazy. So, like, that was really wild. But the Nuggets have one of the better teams in the league. I think people understand that now. 
Um, the Suns are really one of the more overrated teams in the league. I want the Suns to win because KD, but I, 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 it's going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tough, but I, I think they can play better, and I think the uh, Nuggets can play worse, but it's going to be a, it's going to have to be a little bit more balanced of both for, for the Suns to make it out that series. Um, but the Suns, Clippers, I think uh, the Clippers series was really just, I really, like, like I was saying, KD, Kawhi, I wanted to see that bad. We got to see it for really one and a half games. Um, and, yeah, that series was over as soon as Kawhi stopped playing. Shout out to Russell Westbrook. He played good in the series. I think he had his most impactful games when he shot terribly, but he had some great efficient games when it came to getting points and assists. So you got to give him his credit. But for the most part, Devin Booker was by far the best player in the series. Um, you could argue Kawhi, but he only played two games. Um, Sacramento Kings versus the Warriors, the best series of the first round. Went seven games. Um, and I think Curry kind of, he kind of has to have the mantle of the best player in the world. Do I think he's actually the best player? Probably not, but he, I think he's the most deserving right now. Uh, when he come, when you talk about him, what he did in the playoffs last year, when they talk about the fact that they won the finals last year, the finals that he had last year, and then moving on into the first round this year, they were down 2-0 against the three seed. Um, and people said that the 70, the Warriors should mop the floor at them, and they, I guess the last... Uh, five games they kind of did they ended up the last five games 4-1 and they really went 3-0 and then they lost made it kind of de- uh, made the Sacramento Kings kind of desperate and apparently it came out that the Warriors uh that Steph Curry he said before the game that he's gonna be locked in and all this and he motivated his team and all this and he went out there and had 50 points um so yeah Curry had a great great game I still don't think it was better than the D-Book 47. I don't think it was anywhere close to the 42 by Jimmy or the uh, 56. But you got to give Curry his credit. Game 7, 50 points is crazy. It's crazy. I do think the uh, Kings kind of did choke a little bit in the fourth quarter. It could have been closer than it was. But I think Curry for sure deserves the mantle of the best player in the world. He has just been that on all levels for the playoffs in the past couple years. Just that simple. Um, even in the plan with the years that he lost both games, go back and look at those games, and Curry played exceptionally. So I think he does deserve that. And then you got the Lakers and the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies are idiots. LeBron, I knew that after game five, LeBron would come back in game six and go crazy. I did not expect that out of D'Lo, but every, if you look at the games in the Lakers series, every single game, there was a role player that stepped up. It was a great game. Got to give them people the credit. Um, the Grizzlies are just idiots at the same time, though. I don't know why. They're motivating teams, but going outside and just playing terrible basketball. Like, they're just, they were just playing terrible basketball. Like, that was terrible basketball. It was exciting to watch Ja get some fast breaks. But all in all, they have horrible offense over there. I don't know what was going on. But this series went out the way I expected it to in terms of how it was runs. It, I did think the Grizzlies would win, but I didn't think the Grizzlies would play like, I didn't think their gameplay would be to attack Anthony Davis as much as possible. That's a crazy game plan. Um, ja is about ex- what I expected, like I sh- showed y'all in the player tier list. Um, I think Desmond Bain played better than I expected, but Jared Jackson kind of let me down a little bit in that series. Um, but all in all, uh, Anthony Davis was the best defensive player in the playoffs. You could argue he's been the best player in the playoffs so far, just like Devin Booker, just like Jimmy Butler, just like Stephen Curry. But the Lakers, moving on. All right, now let's get into the second round predictions. Uh, bro, I'm literally reading chat. I'm doing a video, okay? All right. Moving into the second round predictions, though. The Heat versus the Knicks. Um, To be honest, I think uh, it's going to be a tougher matchup for the Heat because Brook Lopez kind of made it a lot easier for the role players to hoop in this series. Um, now that we know Jimmy Butler is hurt, and he said that's the hardest he's rolled his ankle since he's been in Miami. And if you've been keeping up with Jimmy, he rolls his ankle at least five times a year. But the thing that does give me hope is in the 2020 finals in the bubble. This was in the bubble, so that's a little bit different. But he rolled his ankle twice in that game. Now, he did say that this is the hardest he's ever rolled his ankle in a Heat jersey. So that's another thing. Um, I seen a video of him walking around already, so that's kind of hopeful, but I don't know. I don't know. But um, I guess the Bucks, our role players was able to get off a lot easier because they was kind of we was kind of playing four and five with Brooke Lopez sitting in the paint for the majority of the game. Um, 
it's going to be a little tougher because in that first game, I think Jimmy played pretty well. I think he passed up a couple layups he could have took taken, but for the most part, he played pretty much perfectly for the defense they was playing on him. Josh Hart was fouling him all game. It was sending two, maybe three every single time. I think the way Josh Hart was defending him, that's how you have to play Jimmy. You have to be physical with Jimmy. Um, so I think he did play defense, probably better defense, but majority of that stuff was fouls. But they did send two or three. I don't know why Budenholzer just said, we have the best perimeter defender in the league. We're just never going to send help. We're never going to get somebody else to guard him. We're just going to have him guard him the whole game when he's in the game. Never going to send a double team. Never going to send help. Never. We're just going to let him die. And that's pretty much what they did for the whole series. Um, but, yeah. Um, I think this Heat-Knicks series, I think the Knicks should win. Just like the Bucks should win, even though the Bucks matchup wise for the heat was a little bit better um when it comes to that set aspect of the role players but the bucks matchup is probably the worst matchup the heat could have because we don't have the link to match up with them but i think the heat have a better chance of beating the knicks than we did the bucks um but with jimmy being hurt i don't know how his, his stuff uh, is up in the air and but the thing is if jimmy get hurt julius randall is coming back i think the best chance the knicks had of beating us is julius randall not playing i will say that I didn't like the matches we had for the most part on Jalen Bronson, for the most part on R.J. Barrett. I hope we do fix that. I did like the matchup of Kayla Martin guarding Jalen Bronson and Jimmy Butler guarding R.J. Barrett in the game. Um, I would rather more so. Why do y'all want me to say the Warriors suck? I don't, I don't get it. But, yeah, I hope we do get better matchups on the Knicks. I do think the Knicks... Should win, but I don't know. I don't know. After that first round, I'm going to stick with my guys, and I'm going to go with the Miami Heat. Um, I think that the playoff experience does matter. Um, the way that ended that Knicks game, it does give me hope without Jimmy Butler because Kyle Lowry, his veteran presence, was making all the right decisions, all the right plays. I'm not really a big Kyle Lowry fan, but I keep it a bean. I don't put my bias into it, and I got to give him the credit he deserved. He got us that win. Um, after Jimmy got hurt, we went up five. Jalen Brunson came back to make it a three-point game. After he made it a three-point game, we went on a run to end the game. They didn't score again really for, until, until they, they pretty much start playing like AAU trap defense. 76 versus the Celtics, this is very simple, an easy series. I think even if Embiid plays, this goes five, maybe even, I don't want to say four, but I'm not surprised if it would have been four. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't think that they, I think that the, Cel the, the 76 are, are a very, very good team, and they should be the team remaining in the playoffs that should beat the uh, Celtics. But I don't believe in anything over there. I think I don't believe in Embiid in the playoffs. I don't trust them. I don't trust Harden in the playoffs. Only I trust Maxi in the playoffs more than I trust anybody on that team. And Maxi's the youngest player on the team. Um, Tobias Harris has played good in the playoffs. I don't believe in him. I don't believe in majority of the people on that team. Uh, PJ Tucker is going to play his role. I believe in that. I probably believe in him the most when it comes to playing their exact role. But for the most part, I don't believe in their coach. I don't believe in their stars. I don't believe in nothing that the 76 has got going on. In theory, if they play to their standards, they should be able to beat the Celtics. But I don't think anybody on that team will play to their standards, and I don't think Embiid is going to play in this series. Um, Nuggets, Suns, um, again, um, I really do, I do, I do want the Suns to win because I have something I want to happen in the conference finals. I want to see KD versus Curry. How do, I just want to see that. I want to see that, man. I want to see that bad. I want to see it bad. Cause just think about it. If Curry was to beat, now I'm, I, I love Curry, I love Katie, I love him, I love Braun, but just think about this: if Curry was to beat Braun, Katie, then beat the Celtics, the agendas people are gonna be trying to push for Curry. It's gonna be crazy. I'm, not, I'm just letting y'all know right now. They gonna start not, they not gonna just talk about Magic. They gonna talk about Kobe. That's going, it's going to get crazy. I'm just letting y'all know beforehand. They're not just going to talk about Kobe. They're going to then start talking about Bron, and they're going to be trying to say that this was Curry's era, not Bron's. Now, that's blasphemy. I know. I don't know how they're going to get that off. I'm not really mad at the magic Kobe takes, but I have magic, like, top four. So that's going to be even crazy to me. I don't think I can – I don't know how crazy, but I'm going to be honest. Curry getting five rings – Last year, I was trying to keep him out the top 10. I, it's it's going to be impossible. I'm going to be honest. It's going to be impossible to keep him out the top 10 all time. Curry, uh, no matter who he plays, 
I'm gonna be honest. I think if they play the Nuggets, it's gonna be a much easier matchup for the uh, Warriors because of the fact that they can put uh, Jokic in the pick and roll. Even though they didn't really do that that much against Sabonis, but I do think they do that much more against the Nuggets because they just kind of have to against the Nuggets. But yeah, I think the Nuggets gonna be an interesting matchup as well. That's gonna be interesting. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but the, the Lakers, I'm really, I'm really interested to see how this Lakers Warriors series goes. Um, I want. The Warriors to win so I can get that KD Curry series, to be honest. But I honestly think the, the Lakers may win. But I do think uh, I think LeBron is going to play amazing in this series. I think AD will play good in this series offensively. He's going to play good defensive regardless. But the I don't, I, I don't know. The Warriors, when it comes to playing LeBron, they know how to really shut down the role players. Um, LeBron just knows how to go against the Warriors at this point, so you can kind of expect LeBron to play well, but it's going to really be on everybody else for the Lakers. So, it's kind of tough. Do you really think that they shouldn't be able to match up? With, the Warriors shouldn't be able to match up because AD should be able to dominate, but it's a couple of things that the Warriors can try to take advantage of on the Lakers, like the three-point shooting, the turnovers, but the Lakers can take advantage of a couple of things on the Warriors, like their length and the turnovers. But if Looney is looking like Dennis Rodman, I don't think any of that is going to even really matter. I think the Warriors do win. Um, I won't. <laughs> it's going to be big for whoever uh, Legacy does, whoever does win, because LeBron getting a seven seed that was that bad all the way to the conference finals, even if he just makes the conference finals, people are going to go crazy. So, yeah. I'm going to go Warriors. I'm going to go Warriors on that. I think it's going to be a close. I think it's going to be like six. It could even be seven. I think that this series, like, even if it shouldn't go seven. I think the uh I think the uh refs in this series are gonna be crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I think the refs in this series are gonna be crazy and they're gonna want it to go they gonna really want it to go like they're gonna want it to go deep. This is gonna be this is gonna be one of the most like if even the NBA finals, this may be the most watched series of the playoffs right here. I don't think it's gonna be the most competitive, but it's going to be the most watched series of the playoffs right here. I'm going to be honest. Especially since the 76ers uh, Celtics series is not going to be good anymore because Embiid got hurt. This is going to probably be the most watched series of the playoffs. Of the past couple years even, maybe. I mean, this you got to think about it. This is the most popular teams in the league by far going against each other. Curry and LeBron, the most popular players in the league by far going against each other. I don't, I don't think people understand it. Um, so, yeah. Um, Denver Nuggets versus the Suns. Again, I want to see I want to see Curry KD. I want to see it bad. I do. I want to see it bad. I want to see it bad. The NBA fan in me wants to see that bad. The uh, bro, there's gonna be so bro. You think that that Curry Braun has legacies on the line? Oh my gosh, that KD Curry legacies will be on the line. KD, there will be there will be there will be legacies on the line in this series. Like this is this is KD's one shot to prove that he didn't need the Warriors. But I don't even think he makes it there. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's gonna be tough. I don't. I don't believe in shit. Aiden, Aiden does. I said I went over this before with Aiden. When it comes to Aiden, bro, I just don't believe in anything he's doing. When it comes to the fact that he's a seven foot two big man with that much athleticism, he does not want to dunk. He doesn't want to protect the rim. He doesn't want to get rebounds. And it's not that he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He doesn't do not one of those. If you're a center or a big. I think he should be doing one of those consistently. He doesn't do any of those. He just want to do floaters and mid-range, and that gets some buckets. I give him that. But it's going to be interesting that he doesn't really take advantage of, like, the athleticism Jokic does. I think Jokic does have good position, like, he positional defense, but, like, I feel like that's a, that's something that Aiden should be able to take advantage of. But, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm gonna have to say the Nuggets do win this series. So, yeah, um... That's just what I think. Now, if it was to keep going, I'm going to be honest. I think y'all kind of understand where I'm going past this series. But, yeah, that's going to be my second round predictions with the round one update. Um, if you guys got any differing opinions, put them in the comments down below. Um, I really, like, pre I'm being as honest as I can. Um, I want KD and I want KD Curry more than it. I want KD Curry in the uh, conference finals more than I want the Heat in the conference finals because if the Heat make the conference finals, we ran it back this year. We're running it back again this year. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that right now, but hopefully the Celtics can really like humble humble Pat Riley and make him make a change or something. It's gonna be really tough. But yeah, um, anything y'all got to say in the chat that I should that I need that may need to change? So what rocks? You think you think AD hasn't been playing good? 
I think AD's been the best defender in the playoffs so far. And I think Bam locked up uh, Giannis for the most part. Um, I hope the Suns beat the Nuggets. Trust me. If there's any bias involved, I would have picked the Suns over the Nuggets. I, I want that KD Curry series so bad. I want it so bad. But I gotta I gotta be honest with you, bro. I think the Nuggets beat them, bro. I don't like the I don't like the I don't like the way they were guarding KD and Book. I think they depend way too much on the fact that if KD's getting double teamed, they're kind of, they're gonna pretty much try to get D Book to get buckets. But I don't believe in D Book when it comes to getting double teamed or trapped at all like I don't believe in that I think they both had pretty good games for the most part in game one I think KD has the limited turnovers but for the most part he was very efficient um he was making play great defense um I think D book was kind of iffy for the majority of the games third quarter he played really well second quarter he played really well I think fourth quarter he played okay too um but he is just not he's not going you can't expect D book to be going for 40 with those triple and double teams I'm gonna be honest you, you can't do that um, especially with, Kurt, with KD, you can't really, I mean, KD's going to really do what he's going to do regardless, but like for the most part, besides those two players, I don't believe in shit they got on the team. CP3 has played awful for the majority of the playoffs so far. Aiden is not really something I believe in, especially going against arguably the best player on earth. Um, that is a player on the team that they're going against that he has to guard, that he has to score on, that he has to out rebound. That is on the other team that has a case for the best player in the world. And I just don't think, I don't like that. I don't like that matchup for Aiden where I don't believe in him as a big man. He's a good player, basketball player, but as a big man, he's not good. Um, it's just that simple. That's really all it comes down to. But uh, Jamal Murray, I don't expect Jamal Murray to have that crazy of a game every series, but he could. I'm going to be honest. If you go look at those Suns games, Russell Westbrook went crazy for the majority of that series because they have no defense. They have no on-ball defense when it comes to stopping people from getting to the rim. Stopping people from getting shots that they want to get off. Now, I'm going to be honest. majority of those shots that Dejounte, or not Dejounte, but Jamal Murray was hitting was very, very, very um, some Steph Curry-esque shots. He was hot. He was hot. Like, he was just kept getting the ball pulling. He was doing fader mag middies. Fader mag three. Like, he was going crazy. He was doing some stupid shots, and he was falling in stupidly. But I'm going to be honest. If they get really more into the flow of their offense, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. But the Suns don't really play any defense at all, so I don't, I don't really, I don't think that's the matchup they want to do. But yeah, like I said, that's gonna be my second round predictions. Everything here is really um, my unbiased opinion. Besides the Heat, I do think that's very biased. <laughs> I won't lie because of the fact that I hate the Knicks. I hate the Knicks, um, and I'm a Heat fan. Like, there's no really ands, if ands or buts about that. I can't keep it a lie. After they beat the Bucks, why would I pick against them? You know what I'm saying? They beat the Bucks. It's not biased at this point. It's facts. But yeah, that's going to be it. If you guys want more, like the video, subscribe if you're new. All that good stuff out the way. Without further ado, it's your boy Fitz. I'm out the bit, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!